I'm Chosen Architect, and this is my modded adventure. So, do you remember these things behind me? Yeah, the Geor, right? Well, I think today we should be able to gather just about all of them, or at least I'm gonna try my best to. And once I get all of them gathered up, my goal is going to be to use Create to process them all. You might be thinking, Chosen, that is quite the ambitious goal. That's gonna take you quite a bit of time. And I'm gonna say, yes, yes, this, this episode probably is gonna take quite a bit of time to record. But I do wanna say that with us being a bit more powerful, we should be able to defeat the Chimera a little bit faster, maybe? We'll see. Probably not, though. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to fight it any faster. We'll see. I mean, we are dealing about 100 damage per shot. So maybe. And I know you guys have seen this fight so many times. I've also got the question, can you put this inside of a jar? You know what? You, you could. You could put it in a jar. But I don't think it's going to help you any. Because uh, I don't think it drops anything at all. Let's see. How much more damage are we actually dealing? I mean, we're not setting ourselves on fire. And we're also not using our shield to get even more power. There we go. Now we have even more damage. Hey, that seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. There we go. We set ourselves on fire. Because, <laughs> of course, why not? Take some more damage. And I say we take this guy out pretty quickly. Um, I almost wonder, though. Would I be able to... Ooh, there's the spiky boy. Would I be able to use something like a mob crusher? Like a mob grinder? To kill this? I know it has different stages, which can be kind of a thing that you have to deal with. But, I don't know. I don't know. That might be a thing to, to look into. Here we go. <laughs> yes, this guy's going to take a little bit of time, and I'm going to have to kill a few of these. I'm going to have to take a few of these guys out. Um, it does seem, though, like, that we're definitely holding our own. Yeah, we are holding our own in this. Oh! Wow, he shot me all the way over here. And he is about to... Yes, he's about to drop. Nice. I hope he stays in his face. Look how much damage, though. Our, our single sword shot does. And and it's over. <laughs> so, yeah, if it wasn't for the waiting for the phases to sort of go through, I would say this actually works quite nice. Now I've got to go after this thing several more times. Now that I've also crafted my Anima Essence, we have everything we need to make more of the dousing rods. But I could also find these without this. And I am going to need... Well, six, technically, and I've only crafted four. So I wonder, I, I could probably go mining a little bit, maybe around that ancient city, and maybe check out the underground around the ancient city and see if we can potentially discover more geodes or maybe even a huge cave like we had found before, where it seems like they're pretty prevalent. So let's head over to the ancient city and let's give this a little bit of a try. Now... You guys have been actually quite creative and I've seen some of the cool things that you guys have suggested in the comments and for locating these things. Oh, this guy did not disappear. No, oh, that's not good. Um, I, can I, can I take him on? Can I go ahead and defeat him? I really don't want to get stuck like not defeating him, but the same time, <laughs> you know, we could. Let's see. Can we block a hit from this guy? We can. Okay, so we're doing okay. Okay, not the blast. Okay, okay, so we're actually doing really good this time. Okay. Woo! Okay, so we took that warden on really quick. <laughs> but what I really want to show is this pretty interesting thing. Um, and you guys have mentioned this to me in the comments. And I thought it was absolutely genius. To be able to locate some of these geodes, like you won't know what geode it is, but to be able to kind of locate geodes, you can use this feature, which is kind of like Ars Nouveau's sort of x-ray feature. And what it is, is it's called the Tablet of Scrying. And we can place this brazier down and we can use the Tablet of Scrying. And then we need to tell it, hey, what are we looking for? And I'm gonna say smooth basalt, which normally surrounds the outside of these uh, structures. So, Oh, of course. Why? There we go. <laughs> so if we go ahead and use this and we activate it as an augment, you can see that it has now been augmented, and we can increase the duration of time 
by using a manipulation essence. So giving that, we should now get 15 minutes worth of this scrying effect. So you'll see a bunch of particles falling down and then we should get that effect. And us being down here, it should be kind of nice. We should be able to see most of the things going on. It takes a moment. There it goes. It's now activated and we have scrying for 15 minutes. And this right here is showing us a location of a geode. Now, I don't know if this is, um, what, what, I don't know what geode this is, but it is a geode. So let's check this out. Let's see if we can't mine our way through here. And let's see, is this, okay, so this is a regular, regular geode. So that's another thing. We're gonna find a lot of regular geodes going about this, uh, this method. Uh, but we should be able to wander around even flying about and for example right there there's one apparently in the sky and so if we work our way up here hopefully we can break through and we can see is this a regular geo and you can do this with any ore that's a that's another awesome thing right so this appears to be quartz we already have a quartz one so we can continue on our way and continue looking <laughs> for for new things but yes, it's going to show up just like that. So us wandering around, hopefully we'll stumble upon some more geodes. This is so cool, by the way. Like, I, I love this. There's one right there. The scry, actually, this is not one. I believe this is just a random uh, vein that you can find that'll have that. So you'll have to keep that in mind, but it's pretty easy to notice what's the real one and what's not. Like it's pretty straightforward. It should just be round. Ooh, here's one down here. And this is iron. And that's one that we needed. Oh, perfect. So I can go ahead and mark this. And we now have iron marked off our list. Ooh, here's another geode. Oh, and this is lapis. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so I found another lapis one. Or not another, but a lapis one. Um, and I should be able to mark that. Uh, the way I'm marking, by the way, is I'm using the... Uh, I'm using the warp scrolls to set the location and then I'll just be able to teleport back here just like that. Also, <laughs> let's go ahead and just get rid of all of these mobs. It shouldn't take very long, right? Oop, and they're all nearly gone. Oh boy. All right, let's see what's in this one. We might get super lucky, might not. It's also, it's kind of odd. Like you see all this stuff like sort of in the way. Let's see, is this one we already have? And this one is coal. So we already have a coal one. So I'm gonna continue my journey. Oh boy, <laughs> we got a different Enderman. This is a new one, I've not seen this one. This is a cave? Oh goodness, a cave Enderman. It just like some of these Endermen, they're, they're automatically are aggro to you. Like you don't even have to look at them. That's so horrifying. Okay, so this is another geode. Please, big money. What do we got? What do we got? It is basically a gamble. We have no idea what this is going to be. Oh, <gasps> we found diamond. Oh, yes. Okay, so we found a diamond one. That is fantastic. Oh, that's another one to add to the warp scroll list. This is fantastic. Diamond is probably one of the most powerful ones to find. Um, but we also want to find emerald. I, I want one of each. Like, regardless of how powerful they are, I, I still want them all. <laughs> They're like Pokemon yet again, I'm collecting. Is, did I generate a collecting game? I have no idea what I've done. Oh man, like up here, yes, this is another one of the Endermen. A Savannah Enderman. I mean, I guess we are in a Savannah. We're just underground. This guy has a witch hat. <laughs> this is so much funny stuff going on right now. Oh, this is pretty sick. This is all redstone? Redstone blocks, raw versions. And this can be smelted down into redstone dust. So all of these blocks equal redstone. That's pretty cool. I wonder if the crystals are as well. But yeah, I have like seven minutes. Oh, here's a geode. And so you got to get pretty close to them. And this is a gold one. We already have it. We're being teased yet again. <laughs> teased yet again with the gold ones. Oh, so this is a pretty neat example. If it's below the ground, like if it's underneath, you'll see that this will take like a direct shot and show you that it's below the ground or below the level that you're currently in. Um, and this one looks like it appears to be like right here. 
So if we work our way to this, we'll see this one is also coal, but still it's a good example of how they can sort of be a, like, you can, you can see the ore um, if you were above ground. It does this like cool particle effect. Ah, here's another one. Man, if we had something that we could just like grapple, that would be so cool. If I could just grapple to something and hang there for a moment. What is this one gonna be? This, oh, zinc. This is a new one. Yes. So we also now have zinc, which is going to be fantastic. So uh, all we have to do is yet again, grab this and set a new scroll. I think the only one now we are missing, right? We're missing emeralds, I think. Well, we, we need six of them. So zinc, uh, we're missing redstone. We found lapis, we found iron. We're missing emerald and redstone, basically. Oh man, if we can find all of those, that would be amazing. This cave just never ends. It's so massive. Like, I don't know. <laughs> this place is huge. There's whole entire biomes, like, underground here. Like, what is this? This is a whole other dimension. Wow. And here's another geode. This one is copper, and we already have a copper one. Continue with the hunt. Yeah, this is like a new biome down here. It's, it's a totally different area. We have volcanic ash. Oh, this... So Region Unexplores also adds underground areas. That's so sick. There's another diamond. Unlucky. I mean, I guess I would be lucky if I was finding it for the first time. Oh, also, <laughs> here's another... If you're wondering what these little areas are, these are occultism areas. There's an occultism. This just is so big underground that... Like, what even? This is a regular geode. We're getting somewhere, though. Oh, I hope I get lucky. There's another one down here. This one was way underground. <laughs> it's another gold one. Oh, looky here. There's a groupling of the Endermen. <laughs> Thankfully, we can get rid of them all. Oh, they drop iron and everything. That is pretty cool. Unfortunately, there's not much time left. But, yeah, it is slowly wearing off does appear that there is something down here hopefully this is emerald or redstone either way uh we now only need to make two of these scries if we can get lucky or we could just continue to do it this way and we didn't even need the wild and come on lucky it's copper <laughs> i already have it so came back to activate another set of scrying this should be perfect there we go another 15 minutes and hopefully this is enough to find the last two it's going to get a little bit harder to find the last two as well. The, the chances of us finding it are a little bit lower since we're specifically looking for those two things. But man, we have so much cave here to explore. Like it just feels like this cave just gets bigger and bigger. The more of it I explore. Uh, this is never ending here. Oh boy, this one's a little dangerous. This spawned me in some sort of boss room. Has some good loot in it. Oh, but it's only iron. I didn't know that there's could be shriekers outside of the... What? Ancient city. Uh, apparently there can be. And yeah, I almost, almost summoned the warden again. Oh, this one's redstone. Okay, so we ended up finding the redstone one. Super powerful. Get rid of you. Definitely mark this location. Okay. So now we almost have all of them. We still need emerald. But now we have these locations marked. And we can always come back here and get these golems going. Ooh, I mean, you just got to look at these these areas. They, they are just... Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's just so much. It just keeps going. This is probably one of the biggest cave systems I've ever seen. By far. Hands down. Hands down. One of the biggest cave systems I've seen. Also, another geode. Please be the emerald that I need. Out of all the geodes I found, I really need this to be... <gasps> it's the emeralds! <laughs> yes! Okay, good, 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 good. So that should be just about all of them, I think. This wraps up uh, to be the last one. I think we've found them all. Now we just need to technically get all of the, uh, the, the, the geode guys over here. And we should be able to do that with these warp scrolls. I, I know it's getting closer to Halloween, but... The this rat has a pumpkin on its head. <laughs> that's that's definitely, yep. 
That, yeah, that's about as Halloween as it gets. Oh, I don't think we're supposed to be able to sneak up on this guy. Oh man, it's a fellow friend that could have won the mob vote, but did not win the mob vote. Oh, poor little fella. This guy could have given it all to us, like every iron pick we could have ever wanted, right? <laughs> that's all this guy would have offered. This, this was such a sad mob vote as well. Because honestly, this this guy, oh, he teleported. This guy would have been just I, the most lamest thing ever added to Minecraft. Like just giving you an iron pickaxe while already deep underground? Come on now, come on. I mean, what? <laughs> He's adorable though, I, I gotta admit. <laughs> this is kind of cute. So I now think I have everything I'm going to need. Let's go ahead and teleport to our first warp scroll. I have all the tablets of awakening and my ritual brazier. So let's consume this scroll. I don't really need it after this point. So let's just go. All right. So this is the emerald one and I can go ahead and activate that. And that should turn one of these budding into our little friendly fella. And then, uh, well, from that point, we know what we have to do. Uh, dispel them with force. <laughs> Dispelled with force. <laughs> That's exactly what we did. Um, and uh, I'm going to grab several of these just to make sure we have enough to get started. Uh, now, something I want to mention that uh, you may or may not know, but the more of these technically that you have working on a single node, the faster it will produce overall. I don't think having more than one is going to be necessary in my case, but if you're playing with friends, it might definitely be necessary to have more than one. So you can make sure you have enough resources. But yes, I've got to travel to each one of these. So on to the next and so on and so forth. So this will be our diamond one. Ooh, very nice. Um, and that should turn one of these. It's basically looking for a bud and then it's going to, yeah, turn it, <laughs> convert the bud into a little golem. Oh, I love this. I love that we're collecting all of them now. It really, truly feels like I'm playing Pokemon. Yes, <laughs> that's what we're playing. Got to catch them all. Speaking of Pokemon, what what was your favorite Pokemon growing up? I mine was definitely I, uh, man, this Skeptile. Uh, yeah, I think Skeptile was my favorite. Nothing like weird facts about Chosen. Chosen somehow likes Skeptile. I really do. I like the little fella. All right, let's grab this. This be Zinc. This will be helpful for getting into create because zinc is a substitute for iron. So yeah, this will definitely be necessary. Where did the little fella go though? Uh Oh, oh no. Where did he go? I don't see him and I didn't see anything convert either. Huh? Oh, there he is. He's, he's hidden. Yep. Perfect. <laughs> he ended up getting him. Just a few more to go. <laughs> Here's the redstone. Ah, uh, the beautiful redstone. Activate. And this one, this one's kind of cool. This is surrounded by Skulk, which seems kind of dangerous, honestly. But we'll take them with force. Nice. I'm kind of organizing these in my inventory in the uh, this particular fashion. Now, once I get all of these and all of them set up in a new area, which I'm going to be doing very soon, then I need to start focusing on how I'm going to transfer all of their drops all around. And I think I'm going to be using create. I really have this mindset that I want to move these items with the create mod. And I feel like that's going to be doable, should be doable um, with all of the uh, the cool things that we have available to us in create in this pack. So moving things around should not be much of a problem. Go ahead and activate this. We'll grab our iron. Even though we do generate tons of iron elsewhere, this will still be something nice to have. And also another thing yet to automate, which is what I find most fun. Now to the last one, which this one should work just like this. Perfect. It should work in here. We don't even have to go inside for it to work. Nice. <laughs> we instantly converted it. Oh boy. Come on, Spooters. Get out of here. Wow. This geode is actually kind of pretty. Look at that. It's all blue and everything. Can you stop poisoning me? Now with all of this laid out, I can start to get my golems placed in. This one is going to share a location on this particular barrel. 
Um, and they're all kind of going to share one centralized barrel. It's all going to lead to one location um, over time. But uh, for right now, we've already got the zinc done. Uh, let's go ahead and put like diamond here for right now. We can put diamond in this location. And it's going to sort of look like this. This is what I'm kind of going for, right? Is like this sort of design where they're like spires. They don't have to be high or anything like that. They don't have to be anything crazy. Just simply done like this. Kind of going in some sort of pattern. I really like the emerald ones. Those are so bright. Um, yeah, we can do lapis. These are kind of the powerful ones over here. It is kind of interesting that that's the last ones we found. They're the, probably the most powerful ones of all. The, between the redstone and the uh, the lapis. Those are super powerful. Same with the emeralds. Wow, the red is so bright. Oh my gosh. It's like so blown out. That is, that is uh, very bright. Okay, and then last but not least, we have our iron. And then getting all of these cute little geode guys on here is going to be the last step. So, perfect. Now I have them all here, um, and then we should be able to convert them. Now, I want to link them to that location, right? I think all of these were linked to this sort of uh, central location that was right on the entrance of all of these. So pretty much right here. Um, barrel... Let's see, I'm going to craft just barrels for right now. I think I'm going to end up removing these and they're kind of going to, some, something else is going to go in its place um, once we fully figure out the whole create setup for it. But for right now, I can go ahead and get them at least converting all of this. And they do need a home location, and so this will set the home location for them. <laughs> Pretty darn cool. I mean, we could end up using modular routers. There's just so many options, so many different ways we can do things. Oh, and I'm just, just excited. I think, though, the idea is I want to take these barrels and all of the ingredients that are inside of them, and I want to send that to our forge. And I think currently where we have our press setting, I think that's where I want our actual smeltery to be that is going to be processing the majority of these items. I did notice a little thing that happens with these guys. Sometimes on, like, world relog, they'll end up embedding themselves inside of the ore here. Uh, I don't know why, but they, they do sometimes. Kind of weird, but there we go. Should be able to store that. It's going to be set. It's already happy. It's already starting to convert. Same with all of the diamond ones. Oh, these are just gonna, they're just gonna work. Okay, this is strict mode. What does strict mode mean? Right click and set home. <laughs> and they automatically start putting in the work. These guys love to work. Now, up into this point, we've not really done a whole lot with create. Uh, we've done a tiny little bit. But we've not created brass or anything like that. So I think at this point, we can probably get away with not dabbling in more brass. Like we can just use some of the basic components that we've already discovered and already used uh, to continue our journey here. And we can still use the Starbuncle wheels, which I think are going to be the best way to power all of these things. And we're mostly going to just use it as a way to transport items. So we need a belt line and we need a Starbuncle wheel to connect to that. And we just basically need to start creating ourselves a belt line that is going to be integrated into these barrels. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that we can go ahead and we can have this raised up by one here. I think uh, the belt line being up here would be kind of nice. So let's see. Let me go ahead and we can place it like so on this. <laughs> they keep going the wrong way. Uh, but we, we should be able to rotate this with a wrench. So the wrench will allow us to rotate, turning this in the direction, hopefully, that I want to turn it into. There we go. So, nice. So this is now setting the direction that I want it to be setting in. And I think these can go uh, 16 blocks or something like that. We can carry this out here until this line is no more. Um, so it might be best... If we then, since it stops here, uh, we might want to have our separate lines sort of look like this. We, we start and stop on each new location, like so. That could work. <laughs> the placing of these can be kind of tedious sometimes. Perfect. So, basically, we're going to have a belt that is going to run to this location um, connected here. Like so. <laughs> nice. So we have this nice little belt. We can make some scaffolds that make this uh, fit into each other and look really nice. 
Um, but we then, we then need to connect from here to here. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that I can go about doing this. Um, and I think maybe using funnels and a storage inter interface in here would be a good way of transferring this. You could connect them directly to each other, um, basically like so, and this would work. But it's not going to look very even. And considering we have this set here, I think it might be a better idea to sort of do this, where we take a barrel such as this, and uh, then we're going to have on the side connected to this, we're going to connect our new belt line. And so our belt's going to run here. And if we're all technically going to be feeding this this direction, we need to make sure that our funnels are pointing in the right direction. Uh, I guess it really isn't, it doesn't matter too much because later on this is going to be determined by the belt's rotation. Oh, that's not con too confusing, but this will be our little buffer that is going to be, be between each of these intersections. So the belt line is in place and boy, oh boy, this was uh, a lot of setup to get the belt lines in. That's the one thing with create, right? Is that uh, it does take a little bit to get all of your infrastructure in place. But now I need to go through the process of how am I going to get power to this belt uh, transferred along the entire thing? Because that tends to make a mess. It looks really clean right now, but it's probably not going to stay the cleanest here soon. Um, and then I'm thinking right here on each of these, I can turn these into casings. Um, it'll make things look a little bit better. I did have to take some, do some sacrifices down here. I wanted to have like another shaft down here, but um, yeah, I don't think that's going to work out as well as I was hoping. Uh, but if I go ahead and put a case here and this connects, it kind of looks like it connects. If you click this on here um, and sort of makes it look like its own unit. Actually, I kind of like it without that on there. Uh, but yeah, right here looks really good. Having these connected and then possibly having these turn like this. Yeah, that's going to look pretty good overall. Um, and so let's go ahead and uh, get them, get some power hooked to this with some Starbuckle wheels. Now, truly for this, all I really need is one Starbuckle wheel spinning in the appropriate direction like this. And this should be fast enough to carry all of the stuff that this thing produces over here. Like, and it's going to route through this and, and so on and so forth. Um, now, to get the power from here to here, it's actually kind of simple. And this goes over a little bit of the create mechanics and how it works. So really, we're going to need chain drives. And chain drives are going to basically act like a belt, but it's not a belt, right? So it's uh, it's going to carry, think of it like a bicycle uh, chain on the inside of this. It's going to carry the same rotation through this block and then ultimately into this block. So now... Uh, instead of just using a belt to connect from here to here on the outside, which doesn't look the greatest, we can just use this. And I can place some trap doors on the back here uh, to make it look a little bit nicer. Now, same sort of thing goes for here. Like most of this is going to be accepting chain drives to get the belts to extend into the direction that I want. Um, same for this back area. Most of this. Now, the hard part is going to be figuring out how I'm going to transfer power through these corner sections. Now I can't just place a gearbox because what that's going to do is it's going to make this belt change its rotational direction. And that's not what I want at all. So I could just go ahead and line the back. It is going to take a bit more to do this, um, but we can go ahead and on the back extend with some more of these encased uh, chain drives and we'll extend it like so. Um, and then we need to get the power transferred over here. So we can use two gearboxes and well, that, that inverts the rotation. So then I could just go ahead and send this power through here and then encase it and it'll kind of look pretty nice, right? And uh, now on the back side here, we have the power rotated because I really don't want this front to be covered too much. I, I want this to sort of stay flush with everything. So this might be one of the best ways to get that rotated back here. Man, this is turning out way better than I was expecting. So all of the belt lines are now transferring everything over here and it's going to lead directly into a barrel that is buried on the other side of my factory. Oh, this is perfect. So with the barrel being right here, I can now interact with this barrel via hoppers or what have you and I should be able to send it into a line where things get smelted. Now, this might seem like more magic, but it is create, technically. Um, and this right here 
is going to allow us to hopefully smelt the ingredients. Now, I don't have a good way of filtering just yet. Um, and this should be blowing air up. Um, and yeah, we don't have a filtering system just yet in place because to make this really nice and automatable, uh, brass funnels would be the best way to do this as we can specify certain things. Uh, but in this case, we're going to have to just figure some other way out for now uh, until we can get more brass put up. But all I need is lava right here. So I think, let's see, can we grab a bucket of lava? Perfect. Um, I hope nothing catches on fire because that's something I need to worry about. But if I put a bucket of lava down here, this should smelt items that are on this belt line right here. So as the item goes along, it starts to get smelted or blasted. And uh, ultimately, we want it to stay on this particular part of the belt until it's done. And that's where filters would come into play. I think I, I think I have a solution without getting into brass. I think I might have a way of doing this. Uh, it is going to require me to drag out some cables, though, from a refined storage system. So I'll just carry these over here. So what I'm thinking is I could possibly use an importer and use the importer as a filter for the smelted ingredients. So I can put this on the belt and then place a trap door here, and that is going to keep the items on this. Now, I am going to need to test this out first to sort of make sure this is all working, but let's go ahead and try this. So we could just blacklist these particular items if we really wanted to, or we can whitelist the items that we're going to get. Um, and we want to make sure that coal can get passed through here, but let's go ahead and just test out blacklisting. So by default, the mode is blacklist, so we don't want this item going in. So if we toss this on here, it should set on this belt until it is fully done smelting, and then it should turn into gold. And then the importer should automatically pull it off of the belt, in which it did. So technically, we now have this automated. That's pretty darn cool. So all I have to do now is get this linked in here uh, and, and sort of get uh, a connection going. And that should be as easy as using funnels. Sorry, not funnels, shoots. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so yes, I can extend this belt all the way over here. Let's see, can I stand here? Perfect. And uh, then we'll just place shoots that are going to pull from this barrel and are going to end up going onto this belt. And that should work. Now the only other thing that we're going to need to work on is going to be how are we going to get the items from this drawer onto the belt. For this, I think I'm gonna use pretty pipes. Uh, it's a pipe that you can see through and all we need is a low extraction module on here. And that low extraction module should pull the items up and place them directly onto the belt, just like you see here. Um, and I do wanna make sure that when I'm doing this, I also go through and set the filters appropriately for this smelting area. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with the, uh, the items just getting completely blasted. Well, or just put into our system entirely. So let's do shards. And we can just go ahead and by default, we can bring everything except for coal because I want coal to, to bypass this whole setup. And we can drag all of these in and set the filters. It's that easy. Now, this has a little bit of catching up to do, but once everything is caught up, this is probably going to just be smooth sailing and everything is going to work just fine. Look at this assembly line. If that's not a thing of beauty, I don't know what is. This is so cool. And uh, I hope that everything can keep up. That's going to be probably the biggest problem is making sure the smelting can keep up. But I'm sure before long, uh, this will all get processed up. And uh, yeah, definitely the coal will, will bypass this is going to end up filling this up, and we might end up with a problem on the chute uh, filling up. I don't remember if these can uh, despawn while inside the chute, but it is holding a certain amount in here. I do notice. Yeah, I don't think they actually drop it, though. I think it holds it inside the chute. So, uh, yeah, this is technically automated and with that guys i hope you enjoyed today's episode if you did be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up guys it's now time to thank the amazing supporter of today's episode and that amazing thanks 
is going to go out to, if I can spell things right, is going to go out to Rowan Crest. Thank you so much for your amazing support, by the way, over on the Discord and becoming a Discord premium member and honestly supporting in one of the best ways possible. Uh, guys, if you are interested, join the Discord, discord.gg forward slash chosen architect and join the amazing community of over 30,000 members and growing every single day. Uh, just for members like you deciding to click that join button. It's absolutely free to join. And we do have an amazing community that will help you and support you through your modded journey, no matter what mod pack you're playing, even no matter what Minecraft question you have, we'll definitely help you over there. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye.